What's up guys, this here's Ecole and today we're finally going to be able to do an update on the FTL 13 project. Uh, I know I've been kind of MIA for about, what, three, four weeks now and I do apologize about that. Um, I've been pretty much dumping any and all free time that I have when I'm either not working or attending to my pregnant wife. I've been just been throwing at this project. I mean, literally, we have a couple of coders and spiders that are, are getting up at like 7 o'clock in the morning and working all the way through the day and calling it quits at 8 o'clock at night, working around the clock, just, just throwing everything that we have at this project. And I am just fucking psyched to show you guys what we already have. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get this underway. Uh, right off the bat, I just want to give you guys a heads up. I literally had zero experience when I started doing the mapping for this. I literally had to take um, stations and load up their maps, look at how kind of things worked and, and their variables and so on and so forth, and then try to put two and two together and try to learn from that. So, um, by all means, this is not a work, um, this is not finished product. This is going to be work in progress. Things are going to be changing and so on and so forth. So, keep that in mind. Um, anyways, right off the bat, you guys can tell this is a, uh, this is the captain's quarters. He has his personal area. I'm not going to open this door. This is the AI core. Um, I don't want to get shot all to shit. This is Commons Room. Doesn't need to be explained. This is the main bridge area. This is higher, higher security, so only like the captain, the munitions officer, the um, comms tech, the pilot, and so on and so forth will be in this general area. Here's the bridge. Uh, normally, the captain would sit here. Uh, we have a placeholder... Um, screen but this uh this eventually will have a sprite for it and this will literally have a um a display that will give everything from uh you know shield strength power levels ammunition um, that's currently loaded everything breaches in the hole all that stuff so that way the captain has access to all this information then he could take that information and relay his orders to his various uh, crew and that way we can hopefully get the uh, jobs that we need to do done um, as you guys can tell, if you look real closely here, you can see that our Sprider is doing excellent work. Um, he's got some navigation sprites. Uh, this is weapon systems. Um, I'm going to show you guys the weapons last. There's a particular reason for that. Um, anyways, let me get buckled in. I always forget to do that. Let's load up the screen. As you can tell, our coder has been just busting his ass doing some crazy cool shit. Um, obviously this little dot represents where we currently are. These are all stars, and within those stars are anywhere from stations and asteroid belts there could be planets derelict ships all kinds of random shit uh, so once you jump to that star then you can jump to each individual um we'll just call them gravitational um objects so uh, anyways this uh a circle obviously represents our current range of our ftl drive that'll obviously get bigger depending on if we do research into increasing our um our ftl capacity and so on and so forth the <clears throat> the red areas represent uh, territory that's held by like uh, enemy, you know, so uh, nano trees in and so on and so forth. There will be gray areas that are neutral, blue areas that are friendly, and so on and so forth. Um, going to an area that is red obviously will increase your chances of having a um, enemy encounter or a ship to ship encounter uh, by by good mount. So that makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead. We're just going to jump to one of these. Um, stars here so you can see it shows you the star name the distance to that star and so on and so forth the alignment so um, let's go ahead and make that jump shows you the minutes so this is gonna take us about two minutes to get there got that cool charge up so as you can see we're flying through space get out of this chair real quick there we go and if you listen closely there's that humming the coder put in a, a slight engine hum, and I fucking love it. It just, I don't know, it's its way more immersive with that slight engine humming. So, as you can see, you can move about on the ship. You know, you got your space flying around, and it's fucking awesome. I don't know, it just, it really gets me pumped when I'm flying through space and walking around on my ship. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the engineering area. So, here's the access. We have um, our telecommunications area and servers and so on and so forth. Engineering supplies. Um, this will eventually be the shield area. The shield generator will fit in this area. Um, we have the FTL drive. Our Sprider is obviously working on getting that stuff done, but it takes a long time because it's kind of uh, it's a bigger object and it's complicated. He wants it to look as intricate and as awesome as this does, so um, we're going to go ahead and let him do his thing. He does amazing work, so I'm not going to rush that. As you guys can see, this is the main engineering. The engine that we're currently operating with is a super matter core. Uh, I'm not going to go into the specifics about how it necessarily runs in depth, and I'm not going to go ahead and set it up. Um, that just takes too much time. Um, 
basically this emitter will fire into the supermatter core. That core will then activate and give off heat. And I think if I remember right, it's plasma gas and O2 as a byproduct. Those gases are then specifically pumped through these lines, operating our thermoelectric engines, giving us power. But we will do that in a later video to explain more in depth of how that works. Um, as you can see, we have our atmospherics. Thank Jesus that my, my coder knew how to do this because I was fucking lost. I was trying to set it up and I was like, this looks like Greek. I mean, look at all this crap. But we've already proven that it works. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. That's a big heavy thing that was off my uh, shoulders. You got your um, your cargo area right here for the Atmos. Obviously, we have maintenance tunnels that go to different uh, areas. I've specifically kept the uh, maintenance tunnels very very tight. I, I want them to be kind of claustrophobic and everything. So there's a reason for that. Um, you got your basic facilities. We have. Uh, bathrooms and so on and so forth. We'll go ahead and start on the lower side of the ship here. As you can tell, this is R&D. Uh, this will be a lot more important than maybe previously done on Space Station 13, um, but also more difficult. So if you want to, let's say, upgrade your laser cannon to do more damage, um, upgrade your thrusters so that they give us more um, <clears throat> boost and evasion um, stats when we are doing ship-to-ship -ship combat, if you want to upgrade your FTL drive and so on and so forth, that's all going to be done through um, R&D. But like I said, it's going to be a lot more difficult. It's not going to be just something you can pop out real, real quick and then have a maxed out ship. So that'll be balanced later. <sighs> Looks like we've uh, arrived at our destination. Let's go ahead and get up here real quick. You can see we have our research director's office. I, uh, I almost cut Xeno from the jobs list, but I decided to leave it in simply for the fact that the shield generator the shield generator will require both power and plasma. So we'll be able to get plasma from the engines, because there's a byproduct, get plasma from Xeno, you can get plasma from virology, all kinds of stuff. Um, so that'll be kind of good. Any which way we can get it from mining, whatever. So that'll be kind of a balancing act that uh, if we take a lot of hits on shields, it's going to really deplete our uh, plasma reserves. Anyways, here we go. We got our robotics office, so mech bay and all that jazz. That's going to be important because we really, you know, mechs are going to be really, really good on this game since uh, there'll probably be a, a lot more combat and a lot more space, like going out in space and doing stuff. Um, hydroponics, basic stuff, nothing special. We have our kitchen area. Um, I'm actually, we're, we're kind of playing with a concept that we might implement, we're not quite sure just yet. Uh, long story short, it's probably going to be something along the lines of a insanity meter. You'll get a space insanity, you'll slowly go up and up and up as you travel through space and as you spend time on the ship. And the only way to get that back down is to eat a good meal, have a beer, um, take a nap every so often at the dorms and so on and so forth. So you got to kind of relax and, 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 and uh, you know, get some get some chow and whatnot to, to keep your, your insanity levels in check. And if you don't, it'll obviously have some debilitating effects that will make it more difficult to operate as a crew member. Anyways, there's Pun Pun, and here's the bar. Nothing special. I like it. It's compact. Here we go. We have the dorms. Most likely what I'll do... Right now I have the beds, but uh, I will replace that with the cryo cells. Um, that way, if, you know... I don't know, your mom's fucking yawning at you because dinner's ready, you can go in there, lock yourself in, get in the cryo cell, um, log out for 10-15 minutes, go eat your dinner, come back, boom. You're, you're, should be, hopefully, still back, you know, still alive when you come back. <laughs> Anyways, this, uh, this blue area right here will be the arrivals type area. Um, if you dock with, like, a space station, this whole thing will be, you know, there'll be an airlock and so on and so forth. Um, it's not done yet, but it's not important. It's not, you know, it's not super needed right now, but I will get to it eventually. Um, also, there will probably be a smaller version of a shuttle. Probably only fit like maybe six people on it and a couple of little tiny, um, like escape pods and stuff. And this area will be mirrored exactly on the opposite end of the ship. So there's technically two ways on and off of the ship, um, arrivals wise. Anyways, let's go ahead and head over there. So I can show you guys. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. You can't really see it, and I'm not going to go get all dressed up to go out in space, but there's a photon cannon right here. And this is obviously the access um, that you, you know, go out in space and go fix it if you need to. Uh, bathrooms. We have the janitor's area. Don't want a messy ship, you know. Uh, 
basic medical area, got, you know, cryo cells, everything. We have the medical storage, chem labs. Uh, surgery, chief of medical, uh, genetics, and cloning. Uh, virology, I'm not going to show you virology because it takes too long to cycle that shit. But it's there, and it has a purpose. You can actually, you know, there's, there's viruses you can make that have byproducts of plasma, which, like I said, you're going to need plasma. We have the cargo, which um, you can obviously unload and load stuff. This will be important for trading. You will be able to um, find different uh, stations where you'll be able to trade equipment for money. Basic stuff, nothing crazy. Got mining equipment, cargo storage. The, this area right here will most likely be a ammo storage. Um, cargo and munitions will be closely tied together in tangent. They work one and one. Um, I'll explain that a little bit more in depth here in a second. But anyways, yeah, you can hold the munitions, push them on the conveyor belt, and then I'll, that'll push them down so that way they can be loaded. I'll show you that in a moment. We have our security area. Uh, we've got a detective's office. we got our cell. Our cells, I guess you say. Uh, main security area, so we can have, you know, equipment set up. Um, as you guys can tell, we have an armory that is just fucking loaded to the teeth. And I know some of you guys are like, holy shit, look at that equipment, that's overkill. Um, well, my, I intend to make our security closer to a stormtrooper than a Renekop. Um, will, obviously we'll do balancing and whatnot, but um, just be forewarned, if you're running around and, you know, stabbing people and stealing their stuff and punching people, you're probably not going to get tased, you're probably going to get fucking shot by a submachine gun. So, just keep that in mind. Um, this is the arrivals area. Like I said, this will be almost exactly mirrored on both sides. We'll implement that later. It's not super important. Um, here we go. There is a new job that is cl closely tied to cargo, which is the munitions officer. Um, obviously, this uh, is the munitions area. So, uh, see, this is a perfect example of work in progress. I, I'm missing the flooring here. Don't worry, I'll get that fixed. So, you'd load your ammunition, aka torpedoes. The officer, the, or excuse me, the captain would then tell the munitions officer to load such and such round, whether it be a, uh, let's say, a, an HE round or a um, EMP shell, whatever. He would load one of the rounds. He would then report back to the captain that uh, the munition is ready. And then the captain would then have that information relayed back to him, and the idea would be that... There we go, let me see if you guys can see that. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do that. Uh, let's go look. Okay, so you can see the cannon here. This is obviously placeholder type stuff. Um, there will be actually a sprite for the cannon, but for now, it's just a photon thing. Don't worry. Um, like I said, it's not. it doesn't matter how it sounds or how it looks. That stuff comes later. What is important is the structure of the game is there. Um, Anyways, the concept that we would have is when you have an enemy, you'd lock target, you'd then pummel the shit out of it with lasers, try to break that shield down, and then once you pop that shield, that's when you hit it with the Mac round, which should do a considerable amount of damage to the enemy ship. Um, what we'll probably end up doing is having it that if the shield is up, and you fire a Mac round at it, it'll probably deflect it and do little to no damage at all. Um, it's about getting that shield, you're gonna have to time some stuff right, uh, work in tangent with each other to make sure you time everything correctly, <clears throat> excuse me, pop that shield, hit it with a Mac round, and hopefully disable it or destroy that enemy entirely. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and fire this, and like I said, there's no audio and, or anything cool, but um, it's the structure that's important. So you can obviously just fire a couple of quick rounds, boom, 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 try to smack that shield, ding, 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 get that shield down, but it might not be enough. Um, later on, we'll have an implementation that you can obviously put more power per bolt, I guess you'd say which will obviously make it take more power and take longer to charge, but then those bolts will hit harder. Um, you can also do it in the reverse, less damage, or excuse me, less uh, energy, less damage, but be able to fire and recharge real quick, just brah, brah, like real quick. So that'll be up to you and that'll, you know, there'll, there'll be some balance, but there'll be times where you want to hit really, really hard and slowly charge, and there'll be times where you want to shoot really, really quick. Anyways, the idea would be the, um, the weapons officer will be firing, the captain would be keeping close eye on the uh, enemy's uh, you know, shield strength, and then let's say that shield pops, boom. The captain would be like, wait for it, wait for it, shield pops, boom, fire, go, go, go! Fire that master round, look up here, boom, off goes that round. And we send that torpedo out and hopefully keep that shield down. And while that's flying, I'm gonna head up here, 
And there's a reason for that. <laughs> I'll show you in a second. But anyways, so um, that is about the gist of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay up here. There's a little surprise that will happen here in just a second. Anyways, the, uh, the important thing is that we have a lot of the structure of the game already implemented. That's super, super important. Uh, I just want to say I, I really appreciate you guys' patience. I know it sucks that I haven't been putting out videos, but that's because I've been dumping all my energy into this project, uh, which brings me to my next point, which is um, we are looking for any and all help. Um, down below, I obviously will have a link to my Steam in the description. If you have any experience in coding, mapping, spriting, anything, we will take you. We don't mind. Any, all, any and all help is appreciated, so please hit me up on Steam, add me to your friends list, and send me some information about you know what, you, what you're interested in helping with, what your experience is, and everything. So um, any, and help, any and all help is, is amazing, so please get that, get that stuff in there. Um, the more people we have working on this project, the faster we can get this thing out and out to the public so we can fucking play it. I am super, super stoked, so hopefully that'll happen here relatively soon. Um, huh, that's interesting. Oh well. Well, what was supposed to happen is there's kind of a glitch. It's not really a glitch, but if you know anything about how the Z levels work, uh, what what usually happens is that torpedo fires off and goes all the way to one side of the Z level that we're currently on, and then it, it hits the end and it pops back on the other side and floats back. And usually it smacks us in the back of the ship and detonates this huge fucking explosion and takes out this whole area on the ship. That was what was supposed to happen, but maybe my coder fixed that issue. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to ask him about that. But anyways, that's not a big deal. Um, it's not supposed to happen anyway, so he probably fixed it. Um, but anyways, you know, I, I appreciate you guys' patience. Please stay tuned. Our, our next video will most likely be on the ship-to-ship -ship combat, and hopefully by then we will have the, um, the ship actually um, done, if not, like, you know, completely finished probably close to being finished so uh, you know just stay tuned for that and uh you know send me that information if you guys have anybody that um, knows what they're doing when it comes to coding or not please contact us we appreciate all the help um, up until then be patient i appreciate you guys love you uh, stay tuned i'm gonna have some more uh, information coming up here real soon okay guys thanks